In a day of many voices, unlimited opinion, and countless division, God desires to restore you back to truth. But what is truth? How is it known? Men long ago dedicated their very lives to bring you the great liberty of knowing the truth, the truth that makes men free. For the process was no wordcraft, nor contrivance of human devices, but the translation of the divine scripture, spoken by the Holy Ghost, was of the Holy Ghost accomplished. As to the ignorant and simple, they have been led astray by evil thoughts concerning the right faith established in all truth. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. I believe that, in the end, truth will conquer. Peace, if possible, truth at all costs. If God spare my life ere as many years, I will cause a boy who drives a plow to know more scripture than the Pope. As darkness increases and men cloak the truth with deception, there is a truth that has the power to penetrate even the hardest heart and lead us to a place of safety. It speaks louder than government, remains stronger than denomination, and is exalted to a higher position than even God's name. Join us over the next few minutes as Scott C. Lovett restores the truth of Jesus Christ to its rightful position in your life as the final word. I'm happy you're back with us for the Final Word television broadcast, and I'm excited to keep talking about this powerful Word of God. You know, we're in a day and an hour where it seems like even preachers aren't preaching the Word. And if you're a minister, I am asking you to get your heart right with God, repent of sin. Oh, you mean you got some? <laughs> yeah, you got some. We all got some. You need to repent of sin. And we need to ask Jesus through his blood to wash us clean. And we need to hear the voice of God. You know, sin, uh, Jesus paid for it. But whenever you don't repent of it and you don't allow the fruit of the Spirit to work in your life, you can actually not hear from God. You need to repent because it's like a relationship. If you don't say you're sorry and you're married and you and your wife have had an argument, you know, you don't say you're sorry, it's going to be a long time before she talks to you. Well, it's the same way with God. You need to repent every day. You need to love God, love the relationship with God, and love expecting His Word to come to pass in your life. We're here on the Final Word broadcast. Maybe this is your first time with us. We want to welcome you today. We're talking about the Word of God and the principles of the Word of God. Now, some of us, we go to church every week and we listen to the preacher. If he preaches a text, uh, uh, we just think, well, I go to church so I don't go to hell. That's not the point of the Word of God. It's about the principles that are in it. Some of you think the Word of God is a bunch of do's and don'ts. Listen, God will let you make your free choice. If you want to go sin, you go right ahead, but it's not going to go good. Because the whole earth is governed by the laws of God. It's not going to go good for our government if they don't acknowledge God. Where are the people praying? They need to pray. Our politicians, our officials need to pray. Long time ago when this country was founded, the men in the White House, the men in Congress, they prayed before they passed laws. They prayed for God to inspire them because they wanted morality in our country. Now, what we do is we just change all the laws. Some people are even trying to change the Constitution. It's not going to work. But lawyers think, well, we can twist it. You know what? They were doing the same thing in Jesus' day. The lawyers wanted to twist the Scripture. It was all about getting people back and vengeance. We've got to stop that. We've got to live the Word of God. Well, in this segment, we're going to go into the seed covenant. We talked about the Word being final last time. This is the final Word. But now we're going to go into the teaching of the seed covenant. The Word of God is a seed. And this seed wants to get inside of your heart. So let's go to the text today and let's talk about the seed covenant. The Word of God is looking for a people to come in agreement with. See, if you don't agree with the Word of God, then whatever you don't agree with is not going to come to pass in your life. God lets you choose, but understand you will stop a good thing when you don't agree with the principles of the Word of God. Listen, you can try another way, man. You can try to make your own truth, but it's not the truth. He is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father the Spirit of the Holy God, except by Him. You need to understand God is a Spirit. Jesus died on that cross so you could be back in the Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, communing with God, living a happy life. And every good thing comes from God. Now, the Word is powerful, and it wants to bring promises into your life. It desires for a people to receive the blessing 
and to interact with God. The Word wants you to interact with it. When you believe it, all of a sudden God's going to show up. When you obey its principles, God's going to be there. And I know you want Jesus on your side. I want God on my side. Now listen, it, 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 it's looking for someone to come in agreement with it. It has the final say. It has uh, the final results in your life. But you've got to believe it. You have got to obey the Word of God. Now when the Word of God is agreed on, it forms a union between you and God. It forms a union between you and the Spirit of God, and God begins to work in your life. Now listen to me, Matthew 15, 52. Let's go there. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and things old. Now when you look at this text, you need to understand that the word new is simply unheard of or unseen as of yet. Did you know that there are parts of the Bible that you have not lived yet? There are parts of the Bible that you have not experienced yet. I've been in, in this thing since I was a little boy. I received God when I was four, got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was six, and I've been walking in the Spirit every day since then. Have I always been successful? No. Have I messed up? Yeah. That's why I love the blood of Jesus. I love the power of God. But I'm not going to lower the standard and say, well, I'm right. No, I'm not. If the principle is in there, I must obey it because I want God's goodness. And there's new things happening in my life as I believe the scripture text. So it comes old and new. Now listen, the word is Old and New Testament, and it's a covenant. Now, the word testament is covenant. Now, a covenant is a agreement or a will between two individuals. But we, we've heard that before by other preachers. But do you know, do you know that there's more to the word covenant than just that? The, the word covenant also means uh, uh, the breaking of bread together or the eating of something together. We can covenant under a meal, a covenant supper, a covenant communion. That is what communion is about. You're in covenant with God. Another meaning for the word covenant is the cutting of the flesh. So if you're going to have a covenant with God, two things have to happen. The word of God has got to be allowed to cut you. It's, got to, it's going to sting a little bit sometimes when the truth is spoken. No one in this country wants to be offended. Well, you're offended because the word of God is being spoken. Nobody likes the truth in this country anymore. We're too busy being offended. We're a bunch of victims. Quit acting like a baby and grow up. And if it's the truth, say, that's the truth. That's right. I didn't do good. I need to apologize. I need to repent. So the Word of God, a covenant, is to eat the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word of God is manna. It's to be eaten. And that's the covenant of God. We eat it, but it cuts our flesh. Now listen, this is the covenant that goes clear back to Abraham. I want to go here. Um, let's go here to Genesis 17, 9 through 13. And let's, let's understand the seed covenant has to be agreed on. It has to be agreed on, okay? So let's look at Genesis 17, 9 through 13. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and of you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that's born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that's born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Now, here in this country, we still circumcise children. We still circumcise males, and there is a physical attribute to this. They know it's healthy. The doctors have discovered early on, you know, they were right. The eighth day uh, is the best day to circumcise a child. Uh, uh, but this is what I want you to understand. The context is not just physical circumcision. There's a lot, a lot of people been circumcised. But that doesn't mean they're in covenant with God. God's covenant was about Abraham receiving his word. He was going to let the word of God cut him to the quick. He was going to let the word of God cut him from doing the works of the flesh. And, and, and circumcision, this covenant, it starts there. It starts there. Well, you need scripture text? I need to believe. But see, there's other things here. The outward circumcision is nothing more than an outward symbol of an inward circumcision where the word cuts you in the heart. It cuts you. It tells you what you've done wrong. And the word eight there is new beginning. Every time the word cuts you, and it might hurt when a preacher preaches 
which is true, unadulterated word, it's going to cut you and it's going to sting. But that means a new beginning is coming up in your life. Genesis 22, 18. Watch this one. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now listen, he didn't say because they were circumcised, because they obeyed his voice. When you obey the voice of the word, you're going to be blessed. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. Now we're in a day where a lot of people, they're turning, a lot of Christian individuals, they're turning to a bunch of Jewish holidays, a bunch of Jewish outward dressing, thinking that makes them more spiritual. No, I don't care how much you put that stuff on the outside. If you don't understand, the principle has to be in your heart. If it's in your heart, you don't have to go through everything else. Listen, we got to understand this. That's why in the New Testament, they didn't require the Gentiles to be circumcised physically because it was in their heart. And God wants to cut you in the heart. Now listen, let's look at Deuteronomy 30 verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. What about Deuteronomy 10, 16? Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. So circumcision, though it was outward, where it really happened, the covenant was in the heart. In the heart. God looks at the heart. How you respond to the word, how you, how you accept it. God looks down to the heart. That seed covenant starts in the heart. It's in the heart, sir. It's in the heart, madam. You can have a Jesus bumper sticker. That doesn't mean that you got Jesus in your heart. There's more to the covenant of God than just going to church. It's how you respond in your heart. If I'm preaching the word and I'm telling you, telling you to praise the Lord because it's in the word and your heart says, no, you've rejected part of the word. If you say, no, I don't have to repent. No, I don't have. This is where we are. We got Christians, so-called Christians all across this nation saying, no, I don't have to repent. No, I don't have to bear the fruit of the spirit. We got people going down the stoplight, flipping each other off. If you don't know what that is, that's a vulgar symbol. You need to hear me today. Just because you say you're Christian doesn't mean Jesus is in your heart. We need to repent in this country and allow the word of God to be preached. It needs to be preached. Now, the word of God you hear is coming to you. It's saying something. It's speaking to you. So God wants, he wants the word of God to manifest in your heart and in your life. God is good. Everybody say, God is good. Can I hear you? Oh, I heard you. Say it. Say, God is good. He's good. Join with me. The word is good. Yes, it is. The word is good. It's what you need in your life. And you need preachers to start preaching that word again. You need preachers to start preaching the unadulterated word of God. And that means the preacher has to hear the voice of God, not just get a sermon from the denomination. He needs to hear the voice of God for that congregation. The denomination doesn't know what kind of rebellion's in you. But God does. He doesn't, uh, they don't know what kind of rebellions in the preacher. God does. When that preacher studies, it will deal with him and the congregation. And everybody will be taught the word of God. Now, we've talking about that covenant, and we're going to uh, go to a few commercials in a moment. But I want you to call the 1888 prayer line. We have a free flow prayer line right now. What does that mean? That means there's actual preachers waiting to pray for you not just a group um, of phone line operators, okay? It's 1-8888, 1 8888 too many, 1-888-242-5229. You go to that prayer line. God's wanting to move in your heart. We want to pray for you. Listen, we need your help. Go there. Uh, become a supporter of this ministry. Well, God is wanting to move. We're going to go, and we'll be right back in just a few moments. Watch these commercials. Corruption charges related to a U.S. political scandal crisis for the White House. Tonight in the IRS targets the biggest cover-up since Watergate bullying to secure records and tampering with evidence. Who will speak the truth? Three men of integrity and honesty. Someone to tell the truth. Turn this nation around. Store confidence in officials. Fervent Fire Ministries has answered the call. The Capitals Tour is in full swing as we travel to all 50 state capitals, carrying the Spirit of God and letters admonishing our legislators to return to the biblical principles that made America great. Join us in prayer as we shine the light into these dark corridors of government. Log on to FerventFire.com and follow us on the Capitals pages. While you're there, click the donate button at the top of the screen. It's fast, easy, and effective. Fervent Fire Ministries, it's not too late for America. Let your voice join ours in the halls of government. We can make a difference in this nation, and you can be a part. 
Do you want to meet with me each week? I want to meet with you. What would be a good time? Well, for you, it's a click away. One click away in your mailbox and you and I can spend time together. For me, I've got to make sure and send you your Monday Minute every Monday. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember, but I do value our time together. Maybe you've never heard of the Monday Minute. You and I can meet together in your email box with a simple click. Open it up and you can see a video every Monday. A video of Bible teaching. A video of clips of me going throughout America to the different states and dealing with different issues. You know, Jesus wants to get in your heart and I have a desire to get with you on Mondays for the Monday Minute. How do you sign up? You go to FerventFire.com, enter your information in and we'll get you on track with the Monday Minute. I don't want to miss our time together. Well, hallelujah. God is so good. I am excited to get with you on that Monday Minute. I want you to go to FerventFire.com, sign up on that website, and you and I can have teachings together every single Monday. You know, we are busy here at Fervent Fire Ministries. Maybe you've never heard of us, but we love Jesus with all of our heart. I'm not some glamour boy preacher up here. I might wear jeans on this sometime. I, I might work. You might find me sweating somewhere. I am laboring for the kingdom and expecting a miracle to happen in your life. Now, we were talking about the Word of God. We're talking about how it's received on this program. And we're talking about the seed covenant. And before we went to the commercials, we were talking about that God, God, it, it, he, your flesh is going to be cut when the Word is preached. How you respond to the Word, a true Word from God, when there's Scripture, two or three Scriptures, it needs to be doctrine. Listen, when, how you respond determines your heart towards God. It does. And if you find anything in you that is foul towards God, you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to love God and understand his principles. Now, men sin everywhere, but God's goodness wants them to repent so they can have a good life, so they can be happy right here on the earth. God's principles will do that if you obey them. Now, the, the covenant that God made with Abraham was not just in the foreskin. It wasn't just in circumcision. It was actually a covenant inside him believing the word of God, him believing the word that was spoken and obeying it outwardly. Listen, a lot of Christians, they go to church, they hear the word of God, they oh, praise the Lord, but they don't do it. You've got to do the word of God if you believe it, if you love Jesus. Now listen, 1 Chronicles 16, 14 through 7. Let's go there. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. There's the word covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You notice that it was the word to a thousand generations. It was the word. The covenant is in believing the word. The covenant is in believing the word. The word is going to cut your flesh. There's going to be things in that Bible you don't like. Why? Because of your sin nature. Because, you know, you're getting offended. The preacher told me what to do. But if the preacher is preaching the Bible, the Bible told you what to do. The Bible. And Jesus is the word. So Jesus told you what to do, and you don't like it, so you need to repent and say, I need more of the Spirit of God. I need more of the Spirit of love for my Savior. Everybody pretty much knows that Jesus loves them. The question is, do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? If you love Jesus, you want to obey his commandments. That's what the Word says. They that love me will keep my commandments. You'll be working on it. Will you miss the mark? Yes, you will sometimes. It's called sin. But you'll repent, and you'll restore your relationship back to God. That's how much God loves you. He's fixed it all for you. He just wants you to love him and want more of his truth so you have a good life and enter into heaven with him. You can have the Spirit of God right here on earth. Hallelujah. Let's look at Isaiah 59, 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words, which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth forever. So God is saying, the word again is the covenant. This is the covenant. The word of God is not supposed to depart out of our mouth, out of our children's mouth, or out of our grandchildren's mouth. In other words, you better be teaching it. It's funny, some of you are grandchildren. They can quote uh, uh, all sorts of celebrities, but don't know a bit of scripture. And we have no discipline in this country because, you know, the federal government says, it's wrong, it's wrong. No, listen to me. 
I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost, godly discipline is right. The Word of God disciplines us. And the truth is, the real reason we don't want discipline for our children is we don't want to be disciplined. And the politicians don't want to be disciplined. And we don't want the Word of God. We don't want God. We don't want God to tell us the Ten Commandments. Because if He tells us the Ten Commandments, then we might see we're doing wrong. Listen to me. We have to understand that we have to obey the Ten Commandments. We have to. Last scripture, and then I'm going to talk to you just for a moment. Haggai 2, 3 through 5. O Joshua, son of Jochadek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenanted with you. When you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. The reason the Holy Spirit stays is because of the covenant. The covenant. You obey the word of God, and the spirit of God comes upon you. The more you disobey the spirit of God, other spirits come. Do you understand that? Grief, depression. You don't feel good when you sin. You know when you miss the mark. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. You can repent and God will restore the spirit of love back to you. And that spirit of love is not just for you. It's for others. So you treat other people right. Now, we've been preaching on this. And this, this series, I want to get into your hand. It's the final word. Now, listen, if you don't have any money, you can go to ferventfire.com and sign up for the sermon of the month for free. You can. We'll send it to you either by email or physically send it to you. But I want to get this into your hand for a $50 love gift, 10 different CDs on the Word of God. The seed covenant, I mean, it's just packed with information of how the Word of God works. Just basics on the Word of God. You need it. we got to start back with basics in this country. Um, you can also become a partner and support this ministry. I'm speaking truth because I love you and I love Jesus and I love what God wants to do in this nation. And He is going to do it. He's going to do it. state histories in different states were developed with different processes. But right here, you see that there was preaching in the state of Missouri. Preaching was not something that was just done behind pulpits. It was actually something done across the state. It was something done out loud in front of people right in the middle of the streets. People understood that the preacher came to convert the soul, the mind, and the heart of men, and that God kept people close to his purpose and his plan. Let's begin to cause preaching to come back to our country. If you're a preacher, get out from behind your pulpit and begin to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ out in public. That's the only way to change society. We've got to stand up and begin to preach the glorious gospel. We're not limited to one place. Let your feet carry you all throughout your state and watch God work a work that no one can deny. Thomas Jefferson sent out an expedition, Lewis and Clark, to go up the Missouri River and to scout out different lands and inspect the territories. I want you to understand that we have a right as Christians to begin to go out and expand God's kingdom the same way that America has expanded hers. Every day we got to go out and take territory for Jesus Christ. It's time for us to quit waiting on some big name preacher to do it. The church has got to get up and we've got to shed the gospel. No one's asking you to chop down trees or go to uncharted territories through the woods. But we are asking you to go to what's already been given to us and reclaim it for Christianity. The Lord is wanting to move right here in Jefferson City at the capital of Missouri. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and revival would sweep across this, this state, God. I ask that you would go into the hearts of men and, God, that you would begin to move. Let a return happen in this country to Christianity that founded this nation in such greatness because God was with us. God, you walked through this country with valley, through the valley of the shadow of death, risen us up to be blessed. God raised us up in high places to be seated with you. And God, I ask God that the generation that's coming would restore this nation back to morality, back to God. It's not over, Christian. Get up. Begin to preach. Begin to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Begin to tell your friends they need Jesus and morality, not just church going. We've got to actually be the image of Christ right here in the middle of this great nation. I'm calling out to you, asking you to be a Christian, asking you to live like a Christian, and don't be afra afraid of the territory that we must take in our day. One of the main things that happened here in Missouri was the World Fair. It happened in 1904. It was a huge monstrosity of a fair on thousands of acres. I want you to understand that back then, people brought things here and made a fair. They spent literally years preparing for it. Now, I don't think this coming generation is preparing for anything. 
Do we know what hard work is? Do we know what labor is? No. We sit back and click on the internet and think we know everything. You don't know anything until you've done the work yourself. And there was a generation that is far gone or is falling off now that has had work ethic, that had family values, that had word, and their motive was right. I want that to come back to this nation and it comes by a relationship with God. Anything a man creates can only come by the creative power of God. And it is in that demonstration that we're focused on here at the World's Fair, right here in Missouri. They did it. We need to focus on what our industry is going to bring about in our generation. Here I am in front of the governor's mansion, right here in the state of Missouri. You know, the word governor is very interesting. I assume you have to learn to govern your life to be a governor. Anything that you do well, you're going to have to discipline yourself and found your foundation on Jesus Christ. This governor's mansion is one of the oldest mansions that still has governors living in it. It has been, uh, since the 1800s, it has been used to house governor after governor after governor. So many different stories, so many different characters. One time there was a lady that she was very religious, she was close to God, and they had a locust plague right here in Missouri. She prayed for three days, called a three-day fasting and prayer in the state of Missouri, and those locusts left, went to the other states. There's power whenever you believe in Jesus Christ when you stand on his word. We know that. So learn to govern your life and watch God work miracles for you. Last year, God asked me to go to all 50 states. He asked my feet to step down, and I've been going to every state capital and praying. I'm on a Capitals tour, and I want you to join me. Your support, your love gifts, they can send me to the Capitol. I'm delivering letters to the politicians, and I would like you to help me. God is going to cause revival to come across this state. I am praying in all of the Capitals. I am visiting them. I am praying for the, uh, the, the different legislatures at every state. God wants revival to come to each and every state. So I want to invite you to join me on this mission. You can make history with me. Just begin to send a love gift, sign up for the Monday Minute, get your Sermon of the Month. All that's at ferventfire.com. And we want you to join us. Heavenly Father God, we pray for our nation. I pray that the word of God would come back to this country. I pray that you would move by your spirit, God. Quicken these people to have a desire for the word of God. I ask God you'd move by your power, God, and you move by your authority. Move by your spirit, Jesus, and change our lives, God. Change us to be more like you, Jesus. We love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all our strength. We repent. We repent where we failed you, Jesus. We want your glory. We want your power. We want your goodness right today. Right today. They need it. I need it, God. We need it. This country needs it. And we're coming back to you because we love your principles and we love your word. See you next time. If you're not enjoying life, you're doing it wrong.